going. Give him, give him a little more hip than I expected today. I could throw, some, I could throw something out. I'm going to tell you right <laughs> now, I, especially on a Monday. I haven't yeah. stretched properly. Good morning, Cincinnati. I'm Bob Herzog. And I'm Jen Dalton. And we thank you for joining us on ARC Cincinnati. First dates are so awkward, so why not have a sense of humor about it? Sure. We are going to hear about a night of comedy that's going to help you find love. What's your first laugh? And it's one of the most important questions for a new pro athlete coming to the Tri-State. Have you tried the chili? We answer the hard-hitting <laughs> questions when it comes to the latest Bengals draft picks just ahead. But first, let's see what's brewing in the Tri-State. The pressure is on, little piggies. The Flying Pig Marathon <laughs> is less than a week away. Oh boy, the full marathon steps off on Sunday morning, but over the years, the event has grown into a week-long celebration. In addition to the full and half marathon, the 5K and 10K are on Saturday, but the fun really is gonna kick off on Friday with the 50 West Mile. Now this short run starts at the original Flying Pig starting line near Longworth Hall, and it ends at the Anderson Pavilion by Smale. Metal from the 50 West Mile also doubles as a bottle opener. Smart. Money from the event that's the Over the Rhine Brewery District. What a cool way to tap into um, oh. the, the Flying Pig excitement with a, yeah. a run that a lot of people, even if they have not trained a lick, uh, can go out and participate in, which I think is pretty cool. Do they do a pet run now? A I, pet walk or run that's part of it, or am I thinking of something different? I don't. It, it would not shock me, but I don't know. I don't know that okay. for sure. Somebody out there probably somebody knows. Know. Maybe you even I have a doggo that you're going to be out there and uh, do some part of the route with. If, if if so, let us know because I'm not sure. I'm I not could be sure. totally wrong. I'm thinking of something else, but but to all the to all the marathoners out oh. there who are sort of tapering down and have been tapering down, heading into the big Good run, have, have a great run. I last week I tried to. I'm, I'm trying to get back into the getting out and running more, yeah. and I'm doing like three. And it's 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 hurting me. Yeah. And I just for all those folks who are out there and just finished their big, you know, 20 mile runs a couple of weeks ago, getting ready for this. God, God bless you and knock them dead. Knock them dead. I know Kyle Inskeep is running from his station. Yes. Chris Rankle, did you say, is running? Yes, too? I believe Chris is running. And um, Tanner confirmed the flying fur. And I think it's on Saturday. At 1 there p.m. You go. There we go. I knew there was something with the animals out there. Doesn't surprise me yeah. at all. We'll get everybody involved, I say. Yeah. Well, uh, moving on here, I think this Zach Taylor gift says it all. And just like Zach Taylor, people are excited. During the draft, the team took five defensive and five offensive players. The early picks focused on tackles with the likes of Chris Jenkins on the defensive side from Michigan and Amari Sims on the offensive side out of Georgia. But later picks included tight ends Eric All from Fairfield High School. How cool is that? And Tanner McLaughlin. Uh, McLaughlin out of Arizona. They also got a playmaking wide receiver in Jermaine Burton. There's only been a few days for all this to kind of sink in. First round pick, Amari Smims is already in Cincinnati with a mindset to learn and win. Very fortunate to, you know, soon get to be able to be around them for a little while and get to know all those guys, you know, seeing how they play, seeing how they like what, like what they do and how, like I said, how to be a pro like those guys. So what kind of player is Cincinnati getting in you? Uh, I feel like, again, a guy who's a great teammate, you know, a guy who's willing to come in and learn from the older guys, you know, take coaching, and, you know, a winner, honestly. Like I said, I like to win, so I want to bring my, willing mentality, my winner mentality here, you know, do as much as possible for this, universe, um, this organization as I can. Mims, 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 Marius Mims. I think I said Sims at the first read there. Meantime, there's movement with two current players. Dax Hill will go from safety to corner. And... Head coach Zach Taylor says Trey Hendrickson is staying with the team. ESPN's Adam Schefter broke the news last week. The Pro Bowl edge rusher was looking to leave. I'm glad that they worked out whatever they needed to to keep him here. Well, and I'm, I'm not even sure they, they worked anything out. He's just got to stay. Like, it's not – I mean, he's either got to retire or stay. Well, do, but do you know what I mean? happened that – I don't know. They might have just been like – they could have – like, that could have been their I want to trade. It, it that could, could have, have been the response. That could have been the response. You know what and, I mean? And, and that means things are worked out. I don't know behind the scenes. I know. I know. I'm just. Maybe this guy right here did, did that and looked over and said, Keep, make, sure, make, make sure he's happy. Make sure Trey's happy. Yeah. Now that Who look may, may, may get that kind of thing done. Hey, a, a little more NFL talk before we move on because this is curious. You know how every year around Super Bowl time we discuss whether or not it might be better to play the big game on a Saturday. That way most people would have the next day off work, right? And then some people lose their ever-loving minds because tradition! Blarg. Well, it looks like the commission might be on to something to kind of split the difference here. Commissioner Roger Goodell appeared on the Pat McAfee show on 
on ESPN Friday and suggested the possibility of one day moving to an 18 game regular season schedule, maybe ditching one of the preseason games and thereby shift the season so that the Super Bowl would be played on President's Day weekend. That would mean some folks would be off work the next day and a lot of kids would be off school too. Sort of an interesting proposition. Interesting, but I did see some people on social media not happy about this because shocking there i know you can you can't please anybody right. people that i said don't, don't like the fact that they would be expanding it would be, it would go to be going too long well the inter the, the interesting part of it I though is know. they would I, get rid of a preseason game like yeah. and, and maybe you know for me personally i'd much rather see i'd much rather an, see more football. another regular yeah. season game than i would i'd rather see 18 regular season two preseason than 17 regular season and three preseason yeah i don't know what the per one person that i saw that said 18 is too much. I don't know what they meant by that. Yeah. You know, like, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take another. I'm always sad right. when it's the end of football season, so I'll take another. Correct. But, just the dollars alone, just the additional television dollars. Yeah. Sort of a lot of money. Know. Yeah. I don't know. So, you can never make anybody happy, right? I mean, or, you, you I'm sorry, you can't make everybody happy. And it would, be, it would be a couple seasons before they could try to even implement something like that anyway. But I think it's an interesting way to perhaps split the difference there for people who, it must be on Sunday. Yeah. But, other people saying it'd be nice to be off the next yeah. day. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Hey, the Cincinnati Zoo is wrapping up their annual Zoo Bloom celebration this week. This Thursday is also the final Tunes and Blooms. The springtime concerts, massively popular. So, so you'll want to make sure you show up early to claim your spot. Admission for Tunes and Blooms is free. This week's featured artist is the folk group The Tillers. Music starts at 6 on Thursday. Free admission starts at 5. The zoo will also be kicking off its zoo baby celebration Ooh, this week. Oh, I love zoo baby. Wait, so after five, you can just walk right into the zoo and yes. that thing? Yes, you can. But uh, do note that it is like a limited, you can't, the full zoo is not it's open. It's not you wander the zoo yeah, or something like that. Yeah, they have like, like a limited time. area. Right, Tanner? Tanner went a couple weeks ago, our producer, and he said. That's. You can see a few animals, but it's not the full zoo. But you can that's still get in. Really free. cool. I didn't yes. know that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a and little. And see a concert and see some of the animals and get the zoo and see the beautiful bonus. Plants. Love yeah. that. You do. Hey, summertime almost here, and as the weather warms up, you'll want to find the best places to yes. dine outdoors. I was thinking about this yesterday. People on the Cincinnati subreddit. They're talking about the best outdoor and rooftop bars and restaurants. Oh, that's so good. We, yeah, we thought we'd highlight a few of their top picks. Yeah, the first one is. The Phelps. People in the comments talked about the live music on Thursday night nice. and that it's a great place to watch Friday night fireworks during red season. I don't know the Phelps. Do you know the Phelps? I know of it, but I have not been to okay. it. But from that it view, looks very if that's nice. what you see, I would like to do it's that. It's much too yeah. cool a place for me to probably know, hang out. Yeah. That's why I don't know it. But it looks a it looks great right. view. We'll have to go there one great time, view. maybe. We'll try it out. Well, this one is newer, and I, I had not heard of this, so that's why we like to do this. This one chose Opal in Covington. We're going to get it up here in just a second, but I had not heard of Opal, but oh, look at that view. Good Lord. That is gorgeous. Opal. Tanner, have you been there? You're cool. We're not. <laughs> no, Tanner, Tanner has. Oh, you need reservations. So okay, Tanner, so you got to think so Tanner's out. So Tanner's out. That, one. that looks great, though. Yeah, it's located right there on the corner of West 6 and Madison. Features a 360-degree view of Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. And how about this one? I have this, this one. This final user says City View Tavern in Mount Adams. Now they write not a rooftop, technically, but best view of the city. That and is you certainly do not need a reservation to roll up there. It's very casual, a, low key, but just a, a gorgeous views, uh, and and just you can get a bite to eat and a beverage, and just a perfect place to be on. Well, a another nice spot day. like that's the incline over on the west side. Yeah, that's, that's another. Great that's one. another yeah. really really great spot. Not technically a rooftop either, but nice on the hillside, mm -hmm. nice view of the city from the from the hills on the west side. So great ideas. The Cincinnati subreddit doing its thing yeah. as always. Sure, you could stop watching now, but let's be honest, you want to see more. So click some of those links, or better yet, go ahead and tap subscribe. That way you'll catch more content from Local 12.